Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the West Lindsay series. This is one of the nine districts of Lincolnshire and one of the county's most rural. It has 128 civil parishes. Let's see which one this episode's all about. Welcome back to West Lindsay, everybody. Now, this is one, even though I am a West Lindsay native, that I've never been to before, believe it or not. This is one that uh, will be pretty much as much of a discovery for me as it will be for you, unless, of course, you know this place. It's not a very big place. The route is sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes, I would have thought, in total. So, uh, yeah, let's get on and see what we can find in the parish of Willerton. West Lindsay series is sponsored by Gaines Recycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop. Located at 20 Ropery Road or online at gainsrecycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gaines Recycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. And this video is also sponsored by Jamie's Fitness Studio. Based on Low Road Grayingham near Curtin in Lindsay, Jamie is one busy lady. Check her out by calling 07906 749 574 or emailing hello at jamies.co.uk. Online membership is available. There's a link to her Facebook page in the description. Jamie's Fitness Studio. Get fit, get happy, get healthy. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to Willerton, which is situated two miles away from the A15 and about three miles south of Curtin in Lindsay. This one was brand new to me, despite it being in West Lindsay. For that reason, upon coming here, I had absolutely no idea that Willerton once had a preceptory, a holding of the Knights Templar, which stood at a farm called Temple Garth. The preceptory was founded during the reign of King Stephen. It was the richest of the English houses of the Templars. It was dissolved in 1540 and its lands passed to King's College, Cambridge. You can see the preceptory's very well-preserved earthworks if you know where to go. Of course, I didn't, but I have found a very good picture of them, which I'll show you in this video. It's another very rural settlement, and a very quiet one too. Industry-wise, it's dominated by farming, and dotted around the village are all sorts of old farm buildings. The name Willerton derives from the Old English words Willig and Tun, and it means Willow Tree Farm or Settlement. Famous historian Ethel Rudkin lived in the village for much of her life. Willerton has a church, a primary school, a village hall, a playing field and a pub. It used to have a post office and village shop too, but these have both now closed down. Come with me once again and let's see what else we can find. We start on Long Lane at one of Willerton's farms. This road is where Ethel Rudkin, the famous writer, historian and archaeologist, once lived. Rudkin also pioneered a collection of Lincolnshire folk material too. Her collections are now part of several public institutions, including the North Lincolnshire Museum. Living in Willerton for most of her life must have done her good because she made it to the ripe old age of 91. Willerton is a pretty village. It's laid out in an oblong shape primarily, based around three main roads. These are Middle Street, Templefield Road, which becomes Vicarage Road the further north you go, and Hollowgate Hill, which we're about to see. 
There's some interesting old buildings on Hollowgate Hill. For a start, take the two houses in shot now. According to the plaques on their walls, the greenhouse is an old filling station and its neighbour is an old saddler's. Oh, so far so good. Um, haven't seen anybody yet. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I am expecting to see somebody here in this village though because people have been asking for Williton for a while. So uh, where are you all? <laughs> where are you all? I've not seen anyone yet. Okay, next landmark is this. Clearly an old chapel. Yes indeed, this is an old chapel. This was the village's primitive Methodist chapel which was built in 1866, replacing an earlier chapel which dated from 1837. It closed in 1979 and has since been converted into apartments. At this corner we take a right turn onto Templefield Road, the name of which should have been my first clue about the preceptory. Trust me, I will be kicking myself for a long time about it because there's a footpath across the earthworks. Instead, I went the other way to check out the Stirrup Inn. This is over 350 years old and it's built from local Lincolnshire limestone. The pub oozes character and it has a roaring log fire in the winter. It's popular with locals and folk from further afield. Off Templefield Road is a back lane which runs past Temple Garth which is where the earthworks of the preceptory can be found. Just off this lane I spotted this farmyard which might not look like anything of note However, you'd be wrong. Okay, I strongly suspect I probably shouldn't be stood here, but I noticed this. And I'm literally just a few yards from the road anyway, so it's not that bad. Look at these old carts. That one says C. Nicholson on the side. And there's more than one. There's, I can see definitely two. There might be more, but I'm not about to go and explore anymore. Aren't they fantastic? Keep that name, Nicholson, in mind, because in a few moments we'll see something else with it on. Temple Garth is behind us here, and had I have known about the Preceptory's earthworks, I would have gone to find them here. Never mind. Here's the school next, which is not the only school the village has ever had. The first school the village had was a national school, built in 1845 and enlarged twice in 1865 and 1871. It could accommodate up to 150 children. This is Northfield Lane, by the way, which again is full of a mix of housing styles and is very characterful as a result. Where Northfield Lane meets Templefield Road, we'll come to what was until recently the village's shop, Moore's. The Moore family ran this shop for over 80 years. It was also the post office and a man named Brian Moore had been the postmaster here since 1973. His grandfather was a postmaster too in the early 1900s in Curtin and Lindsay. You know, whenever I see an old shop front like this, which is clearly not in use anymore, I always feel a twinge of sadness because obviously this at one time would have been thriving. You know, people would have come here for their groceries and their morning papers and to pay bills and things like that. But of course, not anymore. Supermarkets and, uh, you know, the, uh, the big chains have taken over, haven't they? So. Uh, in the village shop is a dying art now these days. Anyway, let's carry on up here. The shop closed in 2020 as a result of the pandemic. That's got a lot to answer for, hasn't it? Thankfully, it didn't derail the local bus service. Much like Hemswell Cliff, the bus you need to get here is the 103. This bus shelter dates from 1950. This plaque says it was erected by Willerton's residents in memory of Dora, who was the wife of Clifford Nicholson of Willerton Manor. I wonder if that's who those carts belong to. The shelter is known as the War Memorial Shelter, and it's not hard to see why. Right next to it, we've got the memorial, which is for World War I only. It shows the names of all who served, 44 in total, six of which never made it home. And just a bit further up the road, Templefield Road's name changes to Vicarage Road and that's where we find the Village Hall. This hosts the local youth club and it's available to hire, much like most others we've come across. Irish notice boards on the wall here. You know what happens with one of those? Hi. There we go. Done. Now, uh, we're taking a uh, turn here. We're going this way, down there. But everything that's up there, I will actually catch later because I'll be driving towards the next village. Sorry. <laughs>
After turning onto Church Street, the first thing I noticed were these houses. Look closely and on the wall in the centre of these, you'll see a stone carving with some Latin written underneath it, which was too worn to make out. These bring us to the Church of St Andrew, which was built in 1794. This replaced an earlier church which once stood on this site. Only the chancel arch and the remains of a chancel window survive from the medieval building. St Andrew's is built in the Georgian style and has an unusually large circular bell opening. It was restored in 1888, and in the chancel there's a monument to Nicholas Sutton, who died in 1602. But that's not its most interesting feature. At the western end of its nave, a vamping horn is on display. Vamping horns were used to summon worshippers to prayer. The horn is six foot long and resembles a trumpet. It's one of only six surviving horns of its type in England. And from the churchyard you can access the village's playing field. Here we go. So here we've got uh, some uh, play equipment over there in the very far distance. There's a couple of football goals. They've got nets here as well, which is unusual. Normally when you find playing fields, the, uh, the goals are just the frame and you don't have a net. But here, apparently, they do. <laughs> it's good. I quite like those. And there's, there is an adventure trail, but I'm not about to attempt that one today. I'm afraid, people, if you were expecting me to do that. So yeah. Right, let's turn back towards the church and carry on walking. All that's left to do now is walk down Middle Street, which will take us back to Hollowgate Hill. Together with Templefield Road, these two form the historic core of the village. Many of the properties on them have large soft verges and mature trees. Relatively speaking, Willerton has very little in the way of new builds. There's no sizeable estates which have sprung up in recent decades, and generally newer housing is limited to patches of infilling. Interestingly, during my research I discovered that Willerton once had a village pond, but I couldn't pin down exactly where it would have been. I think the most likely place for it to have been would have been where the war memorial and the bus shelter is now. Almost back to the beginning, and we have another farm opposite Long Lane, the road where I parked. Whilst this building is still very much in use, opposite this is one which certainly isn't, which got me thinking. Check this, an abandoned building. Looks like an abandoned farm building. Doesn't seem like it's a house or anything, but it's very much overgrown and left derelict at the moment. So I wonder what that was used for in times past. To be fair, I've noticed quite a lot of properties in this village which are like that, which are, which are, shall we say, it's almost as if time forgot them, which is a bit disappointing. Obviously there are some, some properties which are definitely not that. Most of the village is definitely not that, but there are a handful just like that one I've just shown you, which it seems time has caught up with them and no one's really looked after them for a while. It's like time stands still out here in Willerton. <laughs> anyway, we are done with the main walk. It didn't take me 45 minutes. It only took me about 32, 33. So that's pretty good. And I'll just catch the rest of the village heading up towards the next one uh, by using the car. So we'll hop into that, put the camera on the dash, and finish Willerton off. So finally, we're heading up Vicarage Road towards Blyborough. This is largely residential, and beyond the other entrance to Church Street, the houses line only the left-hand side of the road. To the right, it's mainly fields. Mind you, that openness is good, because when you reach the Willerton Blyborough border, like we're about to in a moment, you're treated to a fabulous view. Just before we see that view though, here is today's picture bit.
here we are at the top of the village, the most northerly point of the village. And I'm surrounded by absolute peacefulness out here. This is where I got the village sign. Amazing. It's fantastic up here. Can't hear anything apart from, oh, there's a bus coming. <laughs> That's gonna break the silence. We'll just film the bus. I don't think my car's in the way. I think he should be able to get past me. There's the 103 service towards Curtin and Lindsay. Now, can he get past my car? Yeah, of course he can. Of course he can get past my car. <laughs> He's a skilled driver, of course. So yeah, that's it. That's it for Willerton. Time for me to move on to my next one, which is within sight here as well, because I can already see its playing field over there in the distance, just there. So I don't have to travel very far. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the parish of Willerton, and I'm out.